chapter six. So our objective today is to verify and use properties of trapezoids. This here, this is a trapezoid. Oops. Make sure I got my marker on here. This is a trapezoid. You'll often see me abbreviate it as a trap. And this over here is what we call a kite. Not sure how familiar you, you guys are with kites, but um, used to be when you would get a kite, that's the shape that it would look at. It seems nowadays when, uh, have you guys ever flown a kite? Anybody out there? Anthony? Okay, good, Anthony. Uh, did it by chance have that shape or was it something different? Okay, cool. All right. So anyway, so that's a kite and that's a trapezoid. So first of all, let's talk about vocabulary. So what is a trapezoid? A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Exactly one pair of parallel sides. So this side is parallel to this side. Now we call the parallel sides the bases. So this side and this side, in other words, I would say that segment AB and segment DC, those are the bases. The bases are the parallel sides. The non-parallel sides are what we call legs. And this isn't a big thing, but if I ask you a question about the legs of a trapezoid, you definitely don't want to get that confused with the uh, bases. These are the legs. Now, these two angles right here are what we refer to as a pair of base angles. And the reason we call them a pair of base angles is because they have the same base in common. And again, this seems kind of like a weird definition to throw out, but we're going to use that here in the theorem in just a second. All right, so here's our first theorem. The theorem is, and this is why I told you about a pair of base angles. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, and by the way, isosceles means that the legs are congruent. Isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So here I have an isosceles trapezoid you will see that the two legs are congruent. What that implies then, remember we talk about P arrow Q, is that angle T then has to be congruent to angle P. Angle T has to be congruent to angle P. And angle R has to be congruent to angle A. In fact, if you just look at the picture, that looks true, doesn't it? It looks true that those two angles are congruent. I'll, I'll tell you something that doesn't look true. Does it look like angle T and angle R are congruent angles? Doesn't look congruent to me. This looks like an acute angle. That looks like an obtuse angle. And that's generally going to be the case in a trapezoid. So it's almost one of those things where it's we use the word intuitive. You can almost just kind of look at that and figure that out on your own. So this is what the theorem says again. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then the pairs of base angles are congruent. So let's see if we can look, see an example of that. First of all, it says that this is a trapezoid, which we can see that it's a trapezoid because we can see that this base and this base, those are the parallel sides. We can see that they're parallel because it's marked parallel. Furthermore, we can see that what kind of trapezoid is it? Well, it has to be isosceles. This is an isosceles trapezoid because the legs are congruent. And that's perfect because that leads us right into this theorem. And this theorem tells us if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. In other words, anyone want to take a stab on what the measure of angle one is? I know I'm supposed to be doing these examples, but I think you could probably just say what it is. What do you think it is? 85. You got it. The measure of angle one has to be, oops, I almost wrote 185. That's not what I want to write. How about just 85? It's got to be 85 degrees. And that's based on that last theorem. So I know that this angle has to be congruent to this angle. Furthermore, I know that this angle has to be congruent to this angle. 
Uh-oh. How am I going to find out the measure of angle 2, though? Or for that matter, how am I going to find the measure of angle 3? I know that they're congruent. I know that the measure of angle 2 is congruent to the measure of angle 3. But how do I find either one of those? Well, what I'm going to do is this. Since this is a trapezoid, I know that this base and this base have to be parallel. That's what a trapezoid is. It has exactly one pair of sides parallel. Now I'll think of this as a transversal. So that means that these two angles are what we call same side interior angles. That's review from things we've done in the past. So we've got these two parallel lines, and then we've got these two same side interior angles. And if they're same side interior angles and the lines are parallel, then they have to be supplementary. In other words, the measure of angle 3 plus 85 has to equal 180. Again, let me say that. If these two sides are parallel and this is a transversal, the same side interior angles have to be supplementary. In other words, they have to add up to 180. In other words, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle, or this 85, has to be 180. So that means that the measure of angle 3, so I just need to subtract 85 from there, and that's going to give me 95 degrees. So there's the measure of angle 3. The measure of angle 3 is 95 degrees. By the way, if the measure of angle 3 is 95 degrees, what does the measure of angle 2 have to be? Well, it also has to be 95 degrees, right? Because we just established that they are congruent. So therefore, we can go ahead and finish this guy off and say, well, the measure of angle 2 also has to be 95 degrees because we have already concluded that. Okay? So there's our first example for section 6.6. .6. I think it's a pretty easy example. Um, does anyone have any questions on this example? Oh, I, and, and before I get too far into this, remember what I'm going to try to do today is uh, I'm going to try to use 60 minutes for instruction and then the last 30 minutes uh, I will use for support time. So in terms of support time, that could be working on homework. That could be uh, questions about, you know, the quiz review or something like that. Um, I'm requiring that you stick with me through the first um, 60 minutes, though. Okay, let's go ahead and move on if there's no questions. Don't see any questions. All right, Theorem 620. This one is also about a trapezoid. And again, we're talking about an isosceles trapezoid. If we have an isosceles trapezoid, then its diagonals are congruent. So again, we have a trapezoid that's isosceles. It turns out, and again, I think this is another one that's pretty intuitive, that the, the diagonals are congruent. I mean, it kind of makes sense. It just If you just look at this picture, doesn't it look like that length? And that length should be the same. I, I think so. I think so. So that's what this theorem says. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, then the diagonals have to be congruent. So let's uh, look at another definition. This one is called a mid-segment. Now, we've already seen a mid-segment before, but now we're going to talk about for a trapezoid. So again, remember, this is a leg, and this is a leg. The mid-segment, by definition, joins the midpoints of the legs. That's what it says. It is the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs. So this segment right here is called the mid-segment because this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. So we call this segment in the middle the mid-segment. All right, so here's our last theorem involving trapezoids, and then we'll move on to kites. Well, actually, I'm going to do, I think, one more example involving this. It says, if a quadrilateral is a trapezoid, 
then one, there's two things. Number one, the mid segment is parallel to the bases. So if I go back to this one, if this is parallel to this because it's a trapezoid, it turns out that the mid segment also has to be parallel to the bases. And number two, the length of the mid segment has to be half of the sum of the bases. Okay, so this is the one that's kind of hard for students to uh, understand. So let me show you an example of that real quick before I talk more about the theorem. I'm going to erase what I wrote here. Here's what I'm telling you. Let's say that this length is, um, let's keep it pretty simple. Let's say that's 10, and then let's say that's 20. Now, hopefully you can tell that this mid-segment its length has to be more than 10 and less than 20. That kind of makes sense, right? This is clearly longer than this side and clearly not as long as that side. In other words, if I want to find this length in the middle, all you do is you do 10 plus 20 and you divide by 2. And 10 plus 20 is 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So this right here would have to be 15. So again, the first one, that's pretty simple. This second one's a little bit harder. So if the trapezoid has a mid-segment, then the mid-segment is parallel to both of the other bases. And the length of the mid-segment, in this case it's MN, is equal to TP plus RA divided by 2. Now, I know this looks kind of difficult, but we've actually already used this uh, formula before when we talked about the length of segments. So this was kind of an easy example. If this is 10 and this is 20, you just do 10 plus 20 divided by 2, and that's 15. And, and that's, that's how we do that. Okay, so I'm going to do, this is kind of a hard example, okay? I would encourage you to see if you can do it um, before I complete it. It's based on the theorem that we just talked about. In fact, I'll just let you know right now. It's We're going to use this second part, this harder part, more difficult part. It's going to involve this formula right here, and it's going to involve some algebra. So we have a, we, first of all, is this a trapezoid? The answer is yes. How do we know it's a trapezoid? Because we know the bases are parallel. Do we know that this is the mid-segment? Yes, we do know that it's the mid-segment. The reason we know that it's the mid-segment is because these two things are congruent and these two things are congruent. So we have a mid-segment uh, of a trapezoid. So we're going to use that last theorem. Now here's the thing that I recommend that you do. This one's a lot harder than I one I did just a few minutes ago with the 10 and the 20 because there's X's involved. So what I recommend you do is kind of use this formula right here. And I'm going to write it here. Remember, there's the mid segment. And then these two guys are the bases. So here's the answer. Here's what you got to get. You need, in fact, let me write this in red. T, oops. TU, the length of TU, that's the mid segment. Let me put that in red. TU is equal to one half of LM plus QP. That's what the theorem says. The length of the mid segment is half of the other two bases added together. Let me say that one more time. The length of the mid-segment, TU, is one-half this base length plus this base length. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and substitute some stuff in. So what is TU? Well, in this case, they've told us that TU is 2x plus 4. Okie dokie equals one-half parenthesis. Now what I've got to do, in fact, I might need a little bit more room here. I'm going to scoot this parenthesis over a little bit, make sure i got plenty of room. Now what I need to do is I need to put whatever LM is. Well, what is LM? Well, LM's length is 2x minus 4, so I'm going to write 2x minus 4. 
And then the last piece I've got to do is plus whatever QP is. Well, QP is 3x plus 2. So here's my equation. It looks pretty scary, doesn't it? It's okay. We can work it out. All right. So I'm going to now, now we're talking about algebra one review now. We're back to algebra one. You guys took algebra one last year. I know that's uh, things you've done in the past, but we're going to go ahead and uh, work it out here. I'll do it. Uh, let's do it in green. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this one half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So I'm going to multiply this side by two, and I'm going to multiply this side by two. So this times two is going to give me 4x plus eight. And when I multiply this side by two, the one half and the uh, two are going to cancel. And so we're just left with, well, 2x plus 3x, that's 5x. And negative four plus two, that'd be negative two. Now the equation already looks much easier, much simpler to work with. I did a couple of steps there. Now all I need to do is I'm gonna minus this 4x. In fact, I'll show that work right here. I'm gonna minus 4x, I'm gonna minus 4x here. That's gonna give me uh, eight equals, and then that's just x minus two. Now I just need to plus two on each side. Plus two, plus two. And so we get our final answer here, x is going to be equal to 10. So we've answered our first question, what's x? x is 10 in this problem. x is 10. Now, I'm not quite done with this question because this question also asked me to do what? It asked me to find QP. Well, how do I find the length of QP? Well, I know that QP is 3x plus 2. I wish I knew what X was. Well, actually, I do know what X is. X is 10. So now all I need to do is plug 10 in for X. So I'll do that, and let's just do that in purple. So QP, the length of QP, that's what we're trying to find, is 3 plus 2, and then whatever X is, and X in this case I think we said was 10. So I'll put a 10 right there. 3 times 10 is 30, plus 2 is 32, so our final answer here is 32. Okay, so like I said, that example is a little bit more involved than the other ones. That involves something called the mid-segment. Any questions or comments on that one? Okay, um, so I think I'm going to move on here. We're doing great on time. So now we're going to talk about a kite. And it says a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pair of consecutive congruent sides. In other words, this side's congruent to this side. And this side is congruent to this side. So that's two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. But then it says, but opposite sides are not congruent. So notice that this side and this side are not the same. In other words, let's say that this is maybe 8. Then this has to be 8. This has to be something other than 8. And this also has to be something different than 8. Okay. In fact, let me just make a note right now. A kite is never a parallelogram. A kite is never a parallelogram. In fact, I should probably write that too. A kite is never a parallelogram. In fact, you know what? I think I got a real quick question I want to ask you guys. Here comes a poll question. I'd like you to uh, ponder that before I move on to my next example.
Interesting. So it uh, looks like some of you have not voted yet. I'm still waiting on you. But the question is, or the comment is, a quadrilateral has congruent diagonals and exactly one pair of parallel sides. It could be a kite, rectangle, parallelogram, or an isosceles trapezoid. So it looks like I have about six people have voted, so that's good. And um, I will just tell you right now, it looks like you guys are doing a pretty good job of answering that question. If you have not answered yet, there we go. we got one more. The correct answer there is isosceles trapezoid. It cannot be a kite. Um, it cannot be a kite because these two sides can never be parallel and neither can those two sides. So it can never be, it couldn't be that because a kite has no par or parallel sides. Uh, it can't be a rectangle because a rectangle is a parallelogram and a parallelogram can't be a kite, which is what this is. And it can't be a parallelogram. So the only correct answer is an isosceles trapezoid, which we saw earlier, which has exactly one pair of parallel sides and its diagonals are congruent if it's an isosceles trapezoid. All right, so here we go. The uh, last theorem of the day, the last theorem of the day. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. So if, if it's a kite, like this is a kite, then the diagonals are perpendicular. That's what this symbol means, perpendicular. It means they form this right angle right here, 90 degree angle. Actually, that's one of the reasons that they make kites that shape. And that's why when people fly kites, they're that shape, because it turns out that that is going to give us the most strength that we want when those two um, diagonals are perpendicular. Okay? okay. So this is our last theorem for the day. The quadrilateral is a kite. Its diagonals are perpendicular. In fact, I could go back to this last page right here and I can erase everything. I'm telling you that if I draw this diagonal right here and this diagonal right there, I'm telling you that those have to be perpendicular. So let's go ahead and look at our final example here. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, summarizing some things here in chapter six. It says find the measures of the mark angle. So this is very similar to what we did on the warm up. And uh, so let's just go ahead and proceed. First of all, what does the measure of angle one have to be? Well, that's easy. It's got to be 90. Because we just saw in our theorem here on this last page that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular and make 90 degrees. So angle one, that has to be 90. So we know that one. That's 90. That's easy. So now let's look at this triangle right here. We focus on this triangle right here. We can see, in fact, I'll draw it separately. Well, if this is 90, well, guess what that has to be? That also has to be 90. That doesn't really help me out too much. But then it says right here that this angle here is 51 degrees. So we know we've got 90. We've got 51. Well, to find that third angle there, all I got to do is, they, I know they add up to 180. So 51 plus 90 plus, I'll just say X has to be 180. I'll call this X. So X, will that be what? 141 plus X equals 180. So it looks like X is going to be uh, 39. In other words, uh, that's the measure of angle three. The measure of angle three, which I called X, is going to be 39. And then last but not least, we got to figure out what the measure of angle two is. Anybody want to take a stab on what the measure of angle two is? It's, it's kind of already up there. No ideas? It's one of the angles we've already listed. Okay, turns out that if this angle up here is 51, uh, this angle down here also has to be 51. We could have went through the same thing that we did earlier. It turns out, you see how this is uh, congruent to this? 
that makes this triangle right here an isosceles trapezoid. So if this is 51, this also has to be 51. So there's, there's all the answers for this last example involving kites. So now at this point here, this basically brings us to the end of what we're going to do in chapter six. And so I just want to summarize a couple of things um, before I let you go. I got actually one more example. Um, it's an easy one, though. It's true and false. And then uh, I'll give you guys the exit slip and then I'll see if you guys have any questions during the support time. Uh, I think I'm going to skip this example. Um, I'm going to skip this one. We've already done a pretty good example with uh, uh, finding X's and Y's. So here is a, a summary of everything that we've kind of worked on here. This is a concept summary of chapter six. So chapter six, we've been talking about quadrilaterals. We spent a bunch of time. In fact, your quiz tomorrow is going to focus on these guys over here. A quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel is called a parallelogram. There's a subset of parallelograms called rectangles. There's also a subset of parallelograms that are called rhombuses. And then there's even a special rectangle that's called a square. And it's basically a square or it's a rectangle and a rhombus. Today, we looked at a trapezoid and an isosceles trapezoid. They only have one pair of parallel sides. We also looked at this thing called a kite. Now, guys, in general, these are the only quadrilaterals we will study in this course. So kites, trapezoids, parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. So next week's test, we'll cover just those types of quadrilaterals. All right, last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to ask you guys to give me some feedback on this, and then I'll send the exit slip out in just a second. But I just want you, just very quickly, and you could just do this in your head or not or whatever, I'd like you to just tell me, you know, is it true or false? Are these statements true or false? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I would love it if someone could help me out with these. Um, that'd be great. What do you guys think? Just, just say it out loud, okay? Just say it out loud if you know. Just unmute yourself. You can all unmute yourselves right now. Um, and just tell me, what do you guys think on, them, on A? You think all trapezoids are quadrilaterals. Is that true or false? Okay, no one's unmuting themselves. That's okay. Well, it's going to be true. And that's, if, you, if we think back to this last thing here, this right here, everything that's connected to this has to be a quadrilateral. So a quadrilateral, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. So, so this is true. All trapezoids have, if you think about it, what does a quadrilateral mean? It means it has four sides. Do all trapezoids have four sides? Sure. Yeah, they do. Okay, what about the second one? All rhombuses are squares. True or false? Is this rhombus right here? Look at it. Is that a square? Nope. I see some heads shaking. So this one's false. All squares are parallelograms. 
Okay, I see some people shaking their heads. Yes, that's correct. All squares are parallelograms because the opposite sides have to be parallel. So that is true. All quadrilaterals have four sides. Yep, that's true. You just said that. In fact, I said that just a minute ago up here. E, all squares have only one set of parallel sides. Yeah, I see some people shaking their head. That's not true. Both sides have to be parallel. So this is false. Some kites are rhombuses. Okay, I see people shaking their head. That's good. Remember, a rhombus has four congruent sides. A kite, by definition, can only have two sets of congruent sides. So all four cannot be congruent. So that one is false. And last but not least, in fact, I might just leave this one alone. Some trapezoids have three congruent sides. So I'm going to leave you with that one. Is that one true or false? Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to send you guys the exit ticket that I'd like you to do.